over fragging though yesterday, but they're going to come down here and demolish these houses and we're all next. And they're demolition men. They're not, you know, they're not even uh, aware of us being homeless people being chucked out of our houses here. There, yeah. yeah, yeah. Next Tuesday I'm due to have the same treatment. But the thing is they break, they come down here as though we're some sort of right scum that lives on the bottom of a, a, a fucking sewage tank. Massage. Not only as people, we're just trying to defend houses that have been lived in for donkey's years. Stuff to go on the roof. Spare room, spare kit. Spare kit. Spare kit, spare kit, spare kit. Stick my mouthpiece out again. <laughs> You've done an apprenticeship for that. Twelve years apprenticeship. Just got it, man. Right. They're going back at around the court, yeah. It's a good first line, and then we can put some buttons. And then we can up. put some buttons up and tin and stuff. We should keep yeah. a tin. We should keep a sheet of tin for that one. Yeah, there is one in there. Right, because yeah. uh, that's good, the one they're going to come through. I reckon. Can't really blame them for being The thing to do is not. We rather block their daylight out in their bedroom apparently with this big banner. They might have overslept, thinking it was still dark. <laughs> Their security was certainly asleep. You think you'd look after your ministers a bit better than that, wouldn't you? Homes, not roads! Homes, not roads! Homes, not roads! Over there, I'll just like put that one out in the garden, out the back window, giving us a bit of luck. <laughs> Make the banners, are you? So they brought some banners as well. Yeah. So there were a lot of local people all in the same plight. This just happens to be the first one that we're really barricading up, trying to defend the cases. They call the road. Good road. They'll be getting a road tomorrow. A road to hell, that's what it is. They say the road to hell is made with good intentions. Don't know. That's it, so we'll move on to another road. This is a handcuff. This is what you have to do to try and stay in your house when they're coming in here to take you out. One of us puts a hand in this side, one in the other side, click a small handcuff in the middle so as our hands are joined. That's the only way as a last resort that we can stay in here. We missed one little opportunity. We had a couch and we'd nearly done it. That was to, in the middle of the day, when the shifts were changing, there was quite a big gap at the front. Would have been nice to open the front door and run a couch out to the middle of the and just sit in it until they all start to charge towards you and then run in and do your portcullis down again. <laughs> Which you got that cheeky about yourself. You just had to, didn't you? The last week, right? Well, I'm from Department of Transport. What's known if we're going to vacate the property? No! Um, Grace, go I away, you horrible person. I'm being held a prisoner! Don't, Tom. <laughs> This is the reality we want now, you know what I mean? Absolutely. The reality where you're seeing things that are phenomenal. 
that you're actually involved, your life is involved in some sort of phenomena. Two, two SG wagons appeared and sort of sped up to the front of the houses and side by side in front of both houses. And all these black sort of gloves got out in frenzy, started battering the house with clubs and sticks <laughs> and pickaxes and that. went underneath the Houses of Parliament, these protesters have gone right to the top. With military-style precision, they scaled the roof of one of the most famous buildings in the land, whose occupants have now made the controversial criminal justice bill law. This is how the protest unfolded in front of our own roof camera. There's little police or security guards can do to stop the men, all veteran activists from the M11 Link Road. We were surprised how easy it was to, to, you know, to get onto the roof. However, I mean, that's good for us and probably been a bit embarrassing for them. They know what they're up to and I think they've done a good job. Maybe it's too, too easy to reach uh, <laughs> the, the roof of the House of Commons. <laughs> you're here to defend the earth, right? You're, you're here to stop roads. You're here to promote community, local community living. Yeah. Whatever reasons older people are down here, and if you question any of the young people down here, they all have good solid feelings about why they're here. The strain on them though, the pressure on them, means that forever we're releasing this, this geezer in us, like, phew, it's bursting out of you, in lots of humour and lots of like uh, mm. ranting. Because mm. it is a lot of pressure taken on the whole fucking Western culture out there. You see, I mean, and not letting them in, you know, <coughs> not letting them in your conversation, not having it, not saying, well, when government does it, who are you talking to? Government. We don't talk government here. We talk about what we do. We know what government is, and we feel yeah, they've well, already been stopped. That's where somehow, I feel it falls to bits. Otherwise, you've got millions and millions of little points. The whole wonderful, Look, clear what, picture what falls to is bits? we're not into it's, having it's a in go at them. Sharp focus, we just know it? we yeah. are. Because you've got mixed, Claremont Road. Mixed, mixed description oh, right. of what we are. In terms of As a group, we believe in ourselves, we, surely. Yeah, we're doing, doing, doing but we like right, trees, yeah, we yeah, like yeah. living here without fences. I find that but you I, are addressing a road problem in program. relation to what's actually happening here. Well, what because if everybody here, you're felt stopping the same a road, way as you're stopping a road. 
But that, what he's describing... We'd be, what, we'd what, be going 900 mile an hour faster than we are. Well, but would we? We're, we're all quite exhausted now. I mean, I admit to a level of exhaustion which I can't identify in myself, and I've heard the same thing said by a lot of other people here. Mm. There is a level of exhaustion in us which we're not frightened of. We're just saying it is in you. Mm. And do you invisibly, you know, you're sleeping every night and all that, dreams do exist, time does exist for other people, there has been a lot of publicity. Mm. Do you inherit a sort of responsibility which um, is strange to you because you have achieved something wonderful by making a statement to the nation? about for months and months and months on end and you're waiting on it and you do it and we're a motley little crew without any resources or anything it's tremendous pressure even when the fire brigade you gear and coming around the corner right the road we've got all this backup all the time mm. we have got one mobile phone and if somebody's <laughs> private one i mean it's how we've gone on all right. through that is a lot of pressure on if me you, if personally you look on my practical we, we, we express ourselves openly and if you look on Grove Green, green which is exactly parallel to it well. everyone does all those things locked away and that ultimately causes the tension. But if we're living the sort of life where we are... So we have ourselves. immense humour to balance all this pressure that we're under. Yeah. And as you say, possibly a lot of hedonism comes from Definitely. the fact it's all, yeah. young people... It's a lot of pressure to ask of young people. It's which is emerging. And it's to like, take on the DOT, the Department of Transport, the very people that enslaved all the black people on the boats. Like they are absolutely ruthless. They've killed all our, our old ladies along the road. They've worn them down by frightening them to death, Henry, with the rotten way and the awful way they employ awful firms like Squibb and Davis. Who do not think would call us dirty, scrappy hippies? If you're following a nine-to-five job, you can't do certain things within that period. You have to sleep at night so you're not tired in the morning, so that curtails. It, every, all your actions are curtailed, aren't they? Yeah, They're sort of re... A lot of people see that as being a necessary sacrifice. Yeah, right, so you've got the sacrifice thing, the denial aspect, that's the religious you know, then, angle. Then you end yeah. up with this dichotomy of... Yeah, so why not... You've got the money to be able to do all just the things that you dream about doing, but you haven't got the time to do it. So then when you have got the time to do it, the only things available to you is things like clubs and pubs. I think Out Road is an experiment that is, that's worked quite well. Oh, absolutely. You've been, for a year, you've been, been able to, to make... Yeah. Well, to I mean, torture I'm, them into costing them eight, yeah. 18 million pounds being exposed to the public on numerous occasions. But perhaps more importantly, they're see. teaching us that if we don't have fun, and if so we don't use fun up. creatively to do other things, we're not going to do them. We've got to do them through a medium of pleasure. Fair enough. And if we can't do that creatively, you know, relating to other issues... And we'd be worn then, out. Yeah, it just yeah. won't work. Yeah, we'd be worn out. That's a good point, you know. Would it work any other way? Well, would it work because anyway? that is how it's there's working there's got to be a balance and there? will it work any other way it because doesn't even seem to work on a balance mm. Henry, i'm afraid because you know i mean <laughs> it seems the, to work the, on the reality of it is as much as we'd all like to wish the dot into non-existence and just live a life of pleasure and, and enjoyment and whatever in in reality we are thought, living in that like that. i've never so, thought thought it like <laughs> every now and again they they come along and do something that's a trashing Henry, you're so wonderfully convoluted. <laughs> <laughs> Someone the other day asked me what was the difference between the 70s and now. I said possibly in the 70s, you were saying, they were saying it's wrong to trash the planet and it's wrong to cut us down. Now we're giving them warnings in the 90s, it's about today. Our form of protest is to say to them, we're warning them that air is alive. It is alive, it isn't something you can fuck with. Because we say so. It's a mixed injunction. Who moved this sofa? Well, 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 well. Good packing forks along there. We thought it was on us there. Well, done it. We've done a couple of quick emergency done. smash on to it. Yeah. Well, I eventually found the bones around all that. Well, I'll have to make this more public, but I'll have to leave this up here. It's a very important. You're on that. That's the palm tree up there. Oh, yeah. When you need any numbers, because it's, it's so easy to lose it. I went through four pockets there. At any moment, you just didn't have that moment to spare. You was either pulled up for two oranges left there and half a can of air. <laughs> Who's on the roof and... Uh, Where's me lock on thing and like, like there was so much on you to be in touch with.
always depending on what tactics they were, they were using to uh, weigh you down. But then you forever built yourself back up. <laughs> Phenomenology. 